Worried about your artillery having a problem with its MOSFETs on board? Stay tuned, I'll show you a good fix. Hey everybody, Chris Sergeant Taz here and today I'm gonna go over fixing your onboard MOSFET possible issue. Um, recently, there's been some reports of the onboard MOSFET to their hot ends failing, ramping up to temp, causing all kinds of problems. When they go, you either gotta desolder that little tiny guy off the board, which is over here rather, and replace it, or get a new board, which it isn't that expensive, but time-consuming and frustrating. How do you solve that? This guy right here. This is an external MOSFET. So, these guys will run to power. This will run to the original location of your heater cartridge in the MOSFET. So the MOSFET's just giving it a signal. This big MOSFET is handling your power and then these guys right here will send it to your hot end. So in the next couple of clips, I'm going to show you how I installed it on the artillery sidewinder. Um, it's actually on the SKR version 1.3, but it applies the same to the MKS Gen L board. It, it's the exact same location and um, I'll have a diagram for you as well. So I pre-printed up an ABS case. Um, this is kind of my own design. I added the um, T-nuts and M3 screws and it's going to go into this location here onto the extruder, extrusion rather, extrusion, and I will tighten it up as a location for the box. So I'm just showing you this now as I'm going to have it off while I'm actually doing the wiring. So don't get confused. It's just a matter I'm showing you how it goes on. I just put a couple bolts in, turn the T-nuts, they lock into place, and then you can mount your external MOSFET fairly easy. Okay, so now I've got it off, just so I can do the wiring, fairly simple. Um, I've already mounted it into this case with two actual... I'm going to remove these two guys. It should be HE1 on, on the diagram that I have up on, on that'll be up after this. Um, it's actually your E0. for your heat cartridge. I used a set of long-nosed bent pliers to pull them out. What could live in the board on made it easier. These two are going to go to your MOSFET. So they're going to go on the first two poles. So that, that's going to be your heater cartridge that goes into the MOSFET on that, on that line. Um, they are bipolar, so it doesn't really matter. I went red-black from left to right, just because it follows the same as your power lines going in are red and black from left to right. So I just kept the suit and followed it that way. So you put those in, tighten up your screws, Make sure they're nice and tight. Sometimes it's easier to do it outside the box because then you don't need pliers, but I already mounted it, so kind of stuck. So yeah, you put them all in there. 
tighten them up really good make sure they're not wiggly or loose or touching anything else you want to keep them nice and clear so that's where these go now your this line is your communication line it's sort of plugged into a JST connector and I'm figuring out the length here just to see where I want to cut it off because I don't want, don't need that much wire it's just for signal so there's not a specific color that you need to have the um, main setup when you get it actually has the connector already in there. They're both white. I added two different wires onto it just so I had them longer and to make the make the run to where I put the MOSFET. So I'm going to clip them down and then I'll, I'll run a touch of solder on them just to keep the wires together. You don't need to. If you can feed them in without getting like the, the fray that's fine but I soldered the tips just to make sure they didn't come loose when I was putting them inside the board so those will run up and through and as I'm doing it on the board I'm using long nose pliers to make it easier for me to be able to hold the wire and stick it into the board I mean you can remove the board and do this but I thought I'd make it a difficulty of, of seven just to you know to make my life miserable, right? So you get them into the plugs. Try and find your screwdriver that you misplaced somewhere. Screw that down. Get them nice and tight. This is going to be a communication only wire. So like I said, it doesn't matter the polarity on them. It's just a matter of, I just did it the way it normally shows up on the board because that's the colors I had. And um, you run them through sometime today, Chris, let's go. I'll get it eventually. Tighten up that screw. Maybe. No. Nope. I get it. You want to make sure they get in there nice and tight, so I had to make sure it was getting underneath the clasp before I screwed it down. And I double checked to make sure they wouldn't come out. And then made sure they were nice and tight. Because you don't want them coming loose and then losing your signal. That'll cause you all kinds of fun you don't want. So now I'm just going to run the wires back through just for wire management so I'm going to clean up this little section here move you over so you can see that unfortunately I only had the right gauge in red wire so I actually marked the negative with some black magic marker so that's what I was showing you there um, Get some excess tape off this wiring. Get them all together nice. Pull up that little black piece that's holding the rest of the wire in. It's that little cut through they got on the extrusion. So this will actually mount back up like I showed you in the initial part of the video. I just, for now, because it was doing the demo, I was showing you how you guys how it works. So get all your wires through there so you ain't going to worry about the wire management. And then you're pretty much done with that side of the equation. What you're going to do next is take your negative wire to your negative terminal. There's an actual open negative terminal on the power supply itself, so that's good. Um, I just, I just normal wiring. They were really tight, so keep that in mind.
Also keep in mind the power was off while I was doing this. So run them through. I was trying to figure out some wire management here. Make sure they're long enough. My favorite long nose for getting in this tight spaces. Put them through the clips. Or drop it down on the floor three or four times. It works too. So I was having fun with the positive wire if you can't tell. So get your positive wire in there. Make sure you tighten these down nice and secure. Get the positive in there, make sure it doesn't go anywhere. Then we'll get the negative wire, which I did color code. Even though the rest of it's red, both ends are painted or magic marker black, so I know it's the negative wire. Put that in the negative terminal without letting it fray all over the place. Yep, I'll eventually get this. Secure that nice and tight. Make sure that there's nothing touching anything else. Put your little safety buffer over it. And then I'd wind up mounting that back in place with the screws like I showed you in the beginning. Right now it's just sticky tape down there so I could work on the demonstration purposes of it. Show you how it runs, that's the power end. And that's the signal end. This is me heating it up, so this is, I am verifying it's working. A little blue light comes on, means that I'm actually triggering the sensor to turn on and it's starting to ramp up temp for me. As you can see, not that difficult. Um, a couple of wires, a MOSFET, which is inexpensive, and it's gonna save you a ton of headaches. Rather than popping the guy on this board and having to replace this whole board for a bad MOSFET or a problem with a MOSFET, you use this one just to supply the signal and it's not gonna get damaged. Six dollar part, maybe 10 minutes of install if you prep right. Was it worth it for you? Might be. Anyhow, hope this helped you guys out. If you got any questions or comments, leave them below and Give me a like and subscribe. I greatly appreciate it. Hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching, guys. See ya.